All right, well, thanks for joining us on this uh, little Zoom webinar. Folks are using Zoom a lot these days with the coronavirus and all. But we're gonna be pretty quick today, 20, 25 minutes. And what we're gonna do is take a very quick introductory look at door renew. So things we're gonna cover include what do we do? And then how easy is it to set up and operate one of these businesses? And then we'll talk some, one, one thing that, that franchisees really like about owning a door renew business is a control that gives you over your own schedule. We'll talk some about profitability and then we'll wrap up with some next steps. But what do we do? Well, with a name like Door Renew, you can probably guess. And we chose that name specifically because we did want to have a name that described what we do. So if someone sees your vehicle, they see your hat, they see your yard sign, they see your sign when you're working on a project. They know exactly what you do. It's not like AJ and Sons Inc and you have no clue what they do. Now we wanted a name that instantly and quickly describes what we do. And so, as you can see, we refinish doors. And so you can see four pictures there, two before and after slots. The one on the left is actually a fiberglass door. The other one on the right is a commercial job. It's from a church and that's a wood oak round top. And we are primarily refinishing only the exterior surface of the door. One of the questions that people often have when they, we're talking to them is, to, first of all, they're not convinced that there's enough doors in their area. They say, are there really enough doors? And then when they hear we're only doing the exterior surface, they think, hey, this, you can't make a living out of this. You can't replace your income. Well, believe me, there's a lot more work out there than you might think. That, those were exactly questions I had when, uh, when I started getting into this. But there is a ton of work out there. It is a very underserviced niche. In a business, they say the riches are in the niches. And so we're carving out and we want to monopolize the niche of refinishing uh, front doors. And there's a lot of them, a lot of them out there. I would, and it's very underserviced. Painters don't want to do them. They Residential repaints, res repaints, as they say, they want to get in there and uh, spray, you know, uh, and just paint. They don't want to do anything to do with stain because they're not set up for it. You can't blame them. And there's very few people that do it. I would encourage you to Google and just look up, you know, who's refinishing, restoring, refurbishing, renewing doors in your area. And chances are you'll see a lot of garage door companies. They buy a lot of AdWords on Google because if someone can't get in or out of the garage, that's an emergency and they want to be at the top of the list. Um, but chances are you're not going to see that many people that, uh, that refinish doors. There are some, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, there, there is some competition, but it's, it's very minimal and it's a very underserviced niche. And uh, also, you do, you do not need to be a painter. You don't have to be a woodworker, a cabinet maker, or a carpenter uh, to do this sort of work. We can train you in how to do this. And we'll talk a little bit about training as we get on, uh, on this slideshow a little bit. But I would encourage you, one, to check in your market to see who's doing this. And then two, as you're driving around, look for doors that need work and particularly pay attention to the bottom third of the door. That's what gets the most uh, exposure to the elements is in, in the worst shape. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about the market and you're going to get a feel for where to look for those doors because it, most people think they have to be old wood doors. Not so. And we'll talk about that a little later. When you're starting a business, uh, I'm going to encourage you to get one that's easy to, to operate. And so we, we designed Door Renew with that in mind. We encourage franchisees to start in your garage. Keep your costs down. Don't pay rent if you don't have to. Put that money in your pocket. Use what we say, the customer's money. We're, I mean, we're gonna get a deposit when we start the job. In your very first job, you might, you could conceivably, we don't encourage this, but you could, you could have no supplies at all. Get that customer's deposit, on your way back with their door, stop at Home Depot, get the, you know, the things you need to get started, and you're using the customer's money. Similarly, once you get, start getting a flow of, flow of work, you might need more space, you might need more of this, you might need more of that. Now you're using the customer's money. You're not pulling from your savings or, or whatnot. But we will encourage you to keep your costs down. We've designed the system both on the startup and operation to keep costs to a minimum, but most money into your pocket. My brother Matt and I were the co-founders. He started this and then got me involved in it. Um, we both have uh, extensive background in franchising. We've both seen situations where people spend a lot of money to buy a franchise. Yeah, but with the amount of money they put down to get it started and the operating costs and the time it took to get that to profitability, there were businesses that just 
a good business, perhaps profitable, but they never got profitable enough that they weren't, they didn't need to keep putting that money back in the business to grow it. And the franchisee was not able to put money in his or her pocket and that business folded. We do not want that. We want you to follow our system and we have it all. We have manuals for everything. You can see there what we call the right start manual. That's before you even come to training. All the, what I say, below grade activities, getting your vehicle, setting up your marketing plan, setting up your financial projections, all of those things that you, that you, you need to have done before training. And again, we have spreadsheets, we have pro formas, we have templates for all of that stuff. We have the creative already done for your marketing. We have decal packages and stuff like that. So uh, this really is an easy to operate business. And finally, we're a cash business. We really, our customers expect to pay cash. And you think of it, that may not, that surprises me in a certain way. But when I thought about it, no, it makes sense. You know, if you're paying the guy who does your lawn, paying the, you know, your nanny, the, uh, the, the person who does your, 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 takes care of your lawn. Most of those folks just take cash. We'll do that too. So we get a deposit, cash or check. Uh, when we start the job, get the balance at the end and we're good to go. I did accept credit cards. I did it for a couple of years. I think I had maybe two customers. And since then, I've only had maybe a couple that have even asked, I just said, you know, not really, but just cash or, or check. And uh, it has never once has it cost me uh, an issue, uh, a customer. And again, you may not know because you use your credit card. You don't pay anything for that. It's free. If you are accepting payment by credit card, there is a charge. Could be two and a half to three and a half percent, which is money out of your pocket. Uh, and then you have to balance that merchant account at the end of each month, which can be a pain in the butt. And you also have to be very, very, very careful about how you treat that uh, confidential uh, information that you have in the credit card number. There are uh, PCA laws. I won't go into that, but they're, they're rigorous. Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about one of the main benefits of owning your own business, owning your own, your own door renew business. And that is you get the ability that you have to set your own schedule and be your own boss. You have a with door renew. We like to say you run the business. It does not run you. And, and you know, if you had a retail business where you had certain hours, you had to be open and you had a staff if someone doesn't show up, guess who's there? You know, you have a, a fitness facility, you have an elder care sort of thing, a restaurant, a brick and mortar type place. You, you can be a slave to that thing. You know, certainly as you get to the point where you, you're hiring managers, you can delegate some of that to them. But for a long time, you're going to be a slave to that business. Not so with Door Renew. I like to break it up into four things. Shop work. That's work you do in your shop, hopefully your garage as you're starting. I like to do that in the morning. What is shop work? That's when I have the door in my shop. We go to the customer's house. We pick up their door. We have a temporary door system so I can pull up, get their door in the, my vehicle, put the temporary door up, get a deposit for them, get out of there in half an hour for a standard size door. That might take a little longer for double doors. It's going to take longer sometimes if you got to, you know, pet the dog and tell them how cute the kids are and that sort of thing. But, you know, half an hour get in and out of there and what we like we, we suggest is when you're starting when you're picking up a door do that first thing in the morning if the customer has to go to work they have a reason to get out of there they don't have time to just you know chit chat with you so uh, so you have the doors in your shop i like to do the shop work in the morning and again it might only take an hour and a half or so depending how many doors you have there but it takes up what 20 minutes or so to lightly sand the, the coat of varnish I put on yesterday, clean it up, and then put a new coat on. But by doing it in the morning, I avoid traffic. Then I go on what's called the milk run. So I said we do the doors in the shop, but if that door frame has to be done or the frame around side lights or a transom window, those have to be done on site. And so we do our milk run. And what I like to do is because we're not an emergency service, it's not like someone's without power, they have water dripping from the second floor bathroom. Uh, if the job, especially if it's out on the fringe of your service area, put that job out a month, six weeks, and then work to get jobs, other jobs in that area. So when you're driving out there to do the milk run, to do the side lights and, and uh, door frame, uh, you hit two jobs while you're out there, or three. So that's our milk run. New projects. To start a project, it's going to take a little longer. I think I said it, you know, about four hours or so on a standard size door to strip sand, get it ready for stain. And similarly for door frame and side lights and transom. So you have to schedule that time. You don't have to do it in the morning. 
If you had to, if you wanted to go golf in the morning, schedule new projects in the afternoon. If you wanted to take some time off because your one of your kids had a play at school or a you know soccer game or a baseball game, schedule around it. But you have that freedom uh, for when you start these jobs. It's really nice. Another nice thing is the customer does not have to be home except for two points when we pick up the door and when we drop it off. And there have been times when they haven't even been there when I've dropped the door off. You know, they have a, the housekeepers there or something like that. Um, but that, that is so nice. And if you've ever been in a home service business before, you know, handyman, carpenter, or something like that, you got your day set. And then they call you the night before and said, oh, I forgot I have a tennis match. Can you come next week? Well, now you're screwed. We don't have to deal with any of that. And for the milk run, they don't have to be home at all. And we tell them that. Um, Okay, then the final thing there is admin. And there will be time that you need to just work on your business. And so uh, you can do most of it from the phone. We, we have a Google back office, so our customer database integrates with Google. You know, all of our email, our uh, Word, our docs and that sort of thing, spreadsheets are all online. So you could access them right from your phone, laptop, desktop, whatever. Um, but I, I like to do most of that work in the evening. And that by that, I mean, you know, that's when you're making your deposits to go to the bank, you're checking your marketing, doing your estimates and that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't take a lot, a lot of time. And especially our estimating process, we do not have to go to the customer. When you're first starting, you probably will because you have time. But once you're up and running, you don't want to. Just have them text you or email you a picture. That's all we need. And then we have templates that enable you to get that estimate out very professional, very thorough, but get it out very, very quickly. Okay, let's talk about profitability a little bit. I can't talk about how much you're going to make because I don't have a clue. That what's called in franchising an earnings claim. And as the franchisor, I cannot talk about that legally. But I can tell you what we charge for our service. You know what a hamburger costs, you know, and I can tell you what our direct costs are. Those are the costs that are only incurred when you actually get a job. So here we're looking at what we call a six panel mahogany door, standard size door, 36 inches wide, six feet, eight inches tall. Do these all day long. Um, and we charge $850 for that. You might charge differently, don't know, but most of us in the system right now are charging 850. It's gonna take you about eight to 10 hours to do that. And you can see on the right a list of the supplies that you need to, to, to complete that. I'm not gonna go through that. Feel free to pause your your screen and take a look, but roughly you're going to be, you know, 75 bucks or so. So that's obviously that's less than 10%. You add your royalty and your marketing on you, you're coming in around 13 to 16%. And so that leaves what's 84 to 87%. That's called your contribution to margin, your gross profit. That's money that is available for other expenses, gas, insurance, marketing, stuff like that. That's also money that goes into your pocket. So you can see and do the math, you know, what is that on an hourly basis? It's a pretty good rate. Let's take a look here at a double door, a door with side lights. Again, these, the side lights are the, ver the vertical windows on either side of the door. The frame around those and the door frame needs to be done. You can see we're charging $2,000 for that. And the side lights and, you know, the frame is roughly the equivalent of another door. So it's like two doors worth of surface area, but we're charging more than twice. Why is that? because we have some more time. We have to go to that job. So that's why we charge a little more. And you can see the time there is a little more than twice, two 18 to 24 hours. The numbers are gonna be about the same percentage wise. I'm gonna use about twice as much material, but you know that's to be expected to have twice as much square footage. And you can see the percentages are gonna come in at about exactly the same. And again, you would expect that. And it's nice when you get uh, in, influx of work in the, the flexibility of the schedule because I might have my job, my, my shop full of doors, but I can still be working on more projects because I can schedule those side light jobs. I can do my milk run. And just let's just take two examples here. It takes you about 10 days to do the door. Let's say you had, you know, $2,000 for one of these doors. You had eight, you know, eight, eight fifty for, uh, you know, one of the other doors that we saw, you're, you're talking under just under $3,000. But how much time do you have in that? 30 hours or so? That's not a bad hourly wage. And you can do multiple of these uh, doors. You don't have to do just one of each at a time. You better not because there's more work in your, your market. Okay, let's talk about next steps. Uh, we'll wrap things up here. A franchise disclosure document or FDD is, is standard. 
every franchisor has to have an FDD. It's regulated by the Federal Trade Commission and it has a very similar format from one franchise to the next. If you're at all interested in finding out more about Door Renew, let me know. You'll see my contact information in the next screen and I'll send you our, our FDD. It's, it's a legal document, it's not super exciting, but it's required. Then if you're interested in taking the next step, we would encourage you to attend a discovery day. Right now we're scheduling one from Monday, May 4th. Again, that probably will shift because of the corona thing. But uh, right now we do have one on the books then. Keep in touch and let me know. But that's where we, uh, you know, we, we unlock the doors, we, we pull back the curtain, have you come down to our training center in Cincinnati and just show you how we do everything. So you can really envision yourself doing this. If you want to move forward, then we'll, do, we'll enter into training. And that'll start with Right Start, where we're doing those below grade activities. Once you get those done, we'll schedule a training week in Cincinnati, and we take a, a week to do that. And we focus exclusively on door refinishing. We work things out so that your marketing is actually hitting the week you're at training. So that calls that come in, we can coach you. We can have the customer send you a picture. We can just role play with you what to say, how to prepare the estimate, get it out to them. And hopefully you land a couple of them and you see you, you're in training, you're learning what to do, land in these jobs and then next week you can start on them. So you apply what you learned. And then uh, the, uh, what we call the launch phase. Uh, we, when you leave training, you're gonna, your mind is gonna be pretty full and you're gonna have a million things coming at you. And so we want you to launch it very well. So we have a four week roadmap where this week, these are the important things that you must focus on. And we'll be coaching you on the phone and text and stuff like that. But we have it all written out too. We have a roadmap this week, next week, the week after that, and week after that, just to help you keep focused, pay attention to what's important, get your business launched and get it going. Uh, at the end of that, and once you've done a few jobs, uh, we'll come out and, and spend a couple of days with you. By then you, you, know, you have more experience, you've encountered things we couldn't possibly have covered in training, and you know, you'll have a million questions, we'll have a million answers, and it's just a great, great visit, and you really kick things up a notch. Okay, we're gonna wind things up here. You can see there's our contact information, so let us know if you would like to uh, get the FDD, and then if you want to attend a discovery day, and we'll get you on the calendar. That bottom right slide, you can see the market segments. I mentioned this earlier in the, in the presentation. I thought when I first started hearing about door renew from Matt that they had to be old wooden doors. And boy, was I wrong because I wasn't seeing many of those in my, where I live. And I didn't think it was a nice hobby, Matt, but you can't replace your, I can't replace my income because I don't see that many doors. But if you can, maybe you have to pause and expand your screen. But let's take a look at a few of them. One is the condos, upper left, uh, upper right hand corner. Who, who would have thunk it? And they probably, you know, they may not even show up as a qualified household or a target household uh, for your demographics. But I tell you, I love doing condos because they're close together. If you're there doing one customer, the neighbor on either side and the five across are going to be looking out their window and coming over and asking you for all kinds of things. And I have this one condo association. Blue Heron, and I'll bet I've done 15% of those doors already, and they got more lined up. Fiberglass, you can see that is the next one. I never, you know, people buy fiberglass, or they think it's maintenance free. Well, the door's not going to warp, it's not going to, you know, rot, but the, the, the finish is going to be on the same maintenance cycle as about a, a wood door because it's exposed to the sun, the UV rays, you know, the elements, the, the uh, humidity, and that sort of thing. And um, I love doing fiberglass doors. They're, they, they're, they're good, but they're a ton of work. There's a ton of work in fiberglass doors out there. The historic, those would be those old wood doors. You can see that's next. And um, I love doing those because those doors, you can't go buy a slab door at, at Home Depot, Lowe's or the lumber yard. Those are but custom doors are often unusual size, real thick, little wider, little taller. And people love them. They don't want to replace them, even if they could. So if when they find somebody who can renew it, refer, you know, finish it, they're delighted. Ch uh, churches, you can see, is another one. And um, uh, we've done quite a few churches. And if you get a church, it's not just one door. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's six, seven, eight, eleven, something like that. Garage doors, I personally don't like to do them, so I don't. Um, but you have nicer neighborhoods have the you know the wood garage doors, and they 
get beat up just like the front door. Uh, and then you can see that middle bottom is architectural. These are on your very nice homes, but you'd swear that the home was built around the entryway. These people, there's no way they want to replace that door. They love it. And, they, and they'll pay a, a, a pretty penny to have that thing replaced uh, because it, to replace something like that is you're talking tens of thousands of dollars. I saved the last one uh, until now, and that's the McMansion. And that is our bread and butter. And by McMansion, I mean relatively newer homes, you know, five, 25 years old. And a lot of these that we see in different parts of the country, they have very tall entryways, no porch, no awning, no, nothing covering, shielding the front door, nor is there a, a mature landscaping. The trees are planted, but you know, what are they, 12 feet tall or something like that. So these doors are exposed to the elements and it is very, very common. We're getting doors three, four, five years uh, from homes that are three, four, five years old and the finish is beginning to fail. More often they're seven, eight to, you know, years and that. But do not think they have to be old wood doors. You get a McMansion and it has wood door or fiberglass and uh, it does not have to be very old and that finish needs to be uh, re redone. And we do those things all day long. It's a great market for us. Okay, well, I did want to keep this short and I think we're right at about that 25 minute mark. So I'm going to wrap things up here and uh, you see our contact information there. Pause the screen while you write that down. You probably have it already from emails we've sent you. Uh, but if not, jot it down here, take a screenshot and uh, get in touch with us about getting you the FDD, scheduling that discovery day, getting you into Right Start, getting you trained and helping you launch your business. Thanks so much. We'll be in touch.